Hey what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms and let's continue with our AVL tree topic more specifically we are going to see the process of deletion in a AVL tree and we are going to take the very same example from the previous tutorial where we did the insertion now i'm assuming you guys already know what is a AVL tree what is a binary search tree why is it required to do the balancing and how the insertion happens this is something that we've been covering in the past few videos in this dsa playlist dsa course in case if you have any confusions please do check that out okay and if you already have seen that you're good to go in this tutorial as i mentioned we're going to take this example which you can see on the screen this is basically a avl tree it is completely balanced and a binary search tree hence it is avl tree and we're going to delete the nodes in the following order so we're going to first delete 88 then 99 then 22 then 33 and so on and so forth so as we start deleting nodes from this entire AVL tree, there will come a time when it will become imbalanced. And that is when again we will do the balancing. Now we've already discussed the four different rotations which are required to do the balancing and the four different cases. Do check the previous videos for that. But to add on to that, we are going to do the deletion process. Now we already know that this is a binary search tree which is balanced. But ultimately it is a binary search tree, right? So the deletion process will be the same that we did in the deletion of a node from a binary search tree. Yes, so the deletion process is going to be the same. However, once you delete a node, we have to always keep on checking by calculating the balance factor for every node, whether that whether that tree is still balanced or not. Okay, so that is one extra step. But the deletion process is going to be exactly same, which applied for the binary search tree and that will also apply to the AVL tree. Because ultimately, as I said, AVL tree is nothing but a balanced binary search tree. Okay. All right. So in case if you've missed, these are the three different use cases for deletion of a particular node in a binary search tree. So for a leaf node, which does not have any children, you simply delete that node. So you can simply delete this entire node because it does not have any children. Now, once you delete this node, because this is a AVL tree, because it has to have balance factor, which has to be in the range of minus one, zero and one. You will have to calculate the balance factor for all the different nodes to see whether things are going imbalanced or not. For example, if I delete one more node, now this is also a leaf node. And if I delete this, now this will become imbalanced. Okay. And here now rebalancing is going to be required and we'll have to do rotations. So the deletion is happening in the same way that happens in the binary search tree. But after every deletion of every node, we will have to again calculate the balance factors for every node. Okay. So that's an extra step. So this was an example for leaf node. The second condition or the second use case is for node with one child. So let's say you want to delete 88. It has only one child. So what we were doing, we were linking 88's child, which is 99. It is a single child. We were linking this with 88's parent and then we were erasing or deleting 88. Okay. So you can see the link is still maintained, right? But again, when you do or when you delete a node, again, you'll have to calculate the balance factor for all the different nodes. So that is mandatory for every step. So once you delete a node, regardless whether it is a leaf node or a node with only one child or a node with two children, you will have to do the balance factor calculation again to check whether the AVL tree is still balanced or not. And if not, then you'll have to do the rotations. Okay. So this is case two. And the third case was a little tricky one. So for a node with two children. So let's say you want to delete 77, right? So in that case, what we were doing, we were going to find the largest node in the left subtree. So in case, if you want to delete 77, you have to go in the left subtree of 77 and find the largest node, which is the largest node. 66 is the largest node, obviously. So you have to take that as N max. So 66 is nothing but N max. Then you have to replace this node with the node to be deleted. So 77 is supposed to be deleted, right? So you have to take 66 and put in the place of 77. So 66 comes over here and then you have to delete nmax, which is this 66 node. So you'll delete this. Okay. So this was the process. And the reason why we did this process is because the primary rule or principle of binary search tree has to be maintained. So what is that rule for a binary search tree for a particular node? the left side of the node should have lesser values or smaller values and right side of the node should have greater values. And when you follow this step, that rule is maintained. Similarly, you can also go with another route, which is you have to find the smallest node n min in the right subtree. 
So to depict that same scenario, let me just bring this back to normal. So again, let's say you want to delete 77 and you have to go or use this methodology. In this methodology, what you have to do, you have to find the smallest node n min in the right subtree. So since you want to delete 77, you have to go in the right subtree and find the smallest value. Right now, the smallest value is 88. So what you will do, you will replace this node. So this is going to be called n min. You will take 88 and copy it at the place of 77. So 88 will come over here and then you will erase this 88. Now when you erase this 88, what will happen? You have to delete this node, right? Erasing means deletion of this node. But this time the deletion of this node will have the case of node for one child, correct? So when you delete 88, you have to link 88 with this parent node which apparently now has become 88 also. So you'll have to do this linking and then you can erase this 88 node, okay? So the linking is still there. And after you do this, of course, as I mentioned, you'll also have to do the balance factor calculation again. So there's that. But I hope you get the idea of the three different use cases for deletion. This is something that we've already seen in the binary search tree tutorial. But I just gave you a refresher so that, you know, we can start with deletion of individual nodes in this AVL tree. Okay. All right. Okay. So now let's start deleting the nodes in the following order. Let's first delete 88. Where is 88? 88 is this node. So this is the use case for second one, which is for node with one child because 88 has one child. What you have to do, you have to link the parent node of N. So if this is N, who's the parent? Parent is 77. Link the parent node of N with the child node of N. So who's the child of 88? We have a single child 99. So we have to do this linking and then delete the node N and then you can delete this. So when you do the entire process, you will not have 88 in middle, correct? you'll simply have 99 linked with 77. Now programmatically, we've also done the deletion and I have also shown you how you can write a program in C++ to implement this deletion in binary search tree. You can check that tutorial. For AVL tree, as I mentioned, there will be one extra step. So now that we've deleted 88 from this AVL tree, as I mentioned, we will have to calculate the balance factor for all the different nodes in this AVL tree to check if the balance factor has not destabilized or not gone below minus one or beyond one. And in that scenario, we'll have to do the rotations. So balance factor is given by the formula of height of left subtree minus height of right subtree. And all the acceptable values are minus one, zero and one. So I hope you know what is balance factor and how you calculate the height also. All of this we've already covered. So for first node, that is this root node 33, the left subtree is going to be this. Correct. So the height of this left subtree is going to be the longest path from 22 to 11, which is one and two. So left subtree height is two minus what is the height of right subtree? This is the right subtree for this root node 33. It is going to be one and two. That's the longest path. So two minus two, which is equal to zero. So no problem here. The balance factor for the root node is zero. Let's calculate the height for this right subtree only. That is this subtree because the deletion happened over here. So calculating balance factor for all these nodes on the left side doesn't make any sense, right? So for now, for speed and simplicity purpose, let's calculate the balance factor for these nodes only. Okay. All right. So calculating balance factor for 77. This is the left subtree. The height is going to be one because from 55 to 35 or 55 to 66, we have only one edge. So one minus. This is the right subtree for 77 and we have only one node. So when we have only one node in a tree, the height is considered zero. So one minus zero is going to give us one. So it's still in our acceptable range. Moving forward, the balance factor for 55 is going to be zero because we have one one node on each side for 99. Since we don't have anything, the balance factor again is going to be zero for 35 and 66. Also, it's going to be zero. You can always calculate that. Let's not waste time, but you can see now when you calculate the balance factor for all these nodes, they are in our acceptable range, which means that our entire tree is still balanced and it is still considered as AVL tree. Okay. All right. You guys can go ahead and calculate the balance factor for this side also for practice purpose, but I'm not going to spend too much time over there. Let's move forward and let's delete the next value that is there in the sequence. Okay. So the next value to be deleted is 99. Where is 99? 99 is over here. It is a single value node. So the first scenario applies, right? 
the first case is for leaf node 99 is a leaf node does it have any children over here no so we can simply delete it so when you delete this node as i mentioned again we will have to calculate the balance factor now since again this has happened to the right let's calculate the balance factor for the root node of this entire tree it's gonna be zero only because this is the left subtree lst whose height is equal to 2 because 1 and 2 and this is the right subtree for 33 whose height is also 1 and 2 so rst is also equal to 2 so 2 minus 2 is going to be equal to 0 okay and now since the deletion cut that part and now since the deletion has happened towards the right this is where the 99 was so let's calculate balance factor for this node 77 obviously you can see that this is imbalanced so calculating the balance factor left subtree is this height of left subtree is 1 minus what is the height of right subtree there is nothing to the right of 77 and when you have nothing the height is considered as minus 1 so 1 minus minus 1 is going to be 1 plus 1 correct and in that case we are going to get 2 as the balance factor so when you get 2 as the balance factor you can see that we have a problem here this is not in our acceptable range 2 is basically saying that this tree or this subtree is imbalanced so this is where restructuring is required or rotation is required now let's calculate the balance factor for node 55 also calculating the balance factor we have individual 1 1 nodes on each side so it's going to be 0 for 35 it's going to be 0 for 66 it's going to be 0 so what type of rotation do we have to apply over here so we've determined that this is the node where the problem is so this can be considered as a left left imbalance because you can see we don't have anything towards the right we have the three nodes which we are going to consider for rotation as these three nodes and this is a left left case and left left imbalance now you may argue that there is 66 also so we can also probably take this as a left right imbalance so in that case we can do a left right rotation correct so even that is true but if given a choice between a simple right rotation or a left right rotation always try to go for the simpler option so here we have two options either we can take this as a left left case in that scenario we will have to do a right rotation you can see the orientation or you can also consider it as a left right case you can see first we go to the left then we go to the right so this is how it looks like a left right case correct so even that can be considered and in that scenario we have to do a left right rotation both the rotations will result into a proper balance tree and we'll go with the easier option which is nothing but a left left imbalance or a left left case and in that scenario we have to do a right rotation so since we've considered these three nodes into our rotational scenario when you do a right rotation the center value comes at the top so 55 will be taken to the top 77 will become the right child of 55 and 35 will remain as the left child of 55 and the 66 will have to then be assembled later on so we'll do that let me just cut out this part and put it over here at the side and we'll do the rotation and let's take 55 at the top so when 55 is taken to the top 55 will come over here correct 77 will be taken to the bottom this is the right rotation so 77 will come over here right and 35 will remain as the left child of 55 as it is so 35 will be as it is and this is how the linking will happen now as i mentioned now the only value left out is 66 so where will 66 go so in the original structure you can see 66 was towards the right of 55 so in our current structure also 55 is smaller than 66 that is 66 is greater than 55 so it has to be towards the right but when you go towards the right we have now a new right child of 55 which is 77 so we will compare 66 with 77 and we will figure out that okay 66 is smaller than 77 so it will become the left child of 77 okay so this is where 66 will go all right so this my friends is the proper right rotation that we did on this structure and this is what we are getting as the result okay now if you calculate the balance factor for this newly built binary search tree which initially was imbalanced it will come as balanced so let's quickly calculate that 
we don't have to calculate for the left side that is we don't have to deal with this side right now we did all the rotations over here so let's calculate for the top value for 33 this is the left subtree height is 2 I'm going a little fast because I'm guessing you guys already know all the different things to you know calculate height calculate balance factor etc etc so 2 is the left subtree height the right subtree height is also 2 so 2 minus 2 gonna be 0 so the upper node that is root node is balanced there is no problem over there for 55 now the left subtree has one node so the height is 0 minus the right subtree has two nodes correct the height is 1 because we have one edge between 77 and 66 so 0 minus 1 is going to give you minus 1 so now we've got a balance situation over here initially this was the node where we had 77 and it was having a minus 2 right so now it is balanced for 35 it is going to be 0 for 77 it's going to be 1 you can calculate this for 66 is going to be 0 so now you can see we've got all the values with our acceptable range and now we can say that this is properly balanced and again this is a avl tree okay all right so let's move forward let's delete 22 okay so now we want to delete 22 and 22 is over here you can see 22 is the case where it is a node which we are going to delete which has two children because 22 has 15 and 25 so now we have to apply this rule we have to find the largest node in the left subtree so in the left subtree who's the largest node it is 15 correct so now we will take 15 and put it at the place of 22 so 15 is copied over here but now we have a duplicate copy of 15 so now this 15 has to be deleted so now we will go and try to delete this so when you try to delete this this is a case for node with one child so in that case what we do we link the parent node for this particular node who's the parent it is this one we will link this with 11 and then we can delete this so programmatically there will be many steps involved but right now these are the basic steps so then we will erase this entirely and then we will link 11 with 15 right okay so after deleting 22 obviously we will again have to calculate the balance factor so calculating the balance factor for 33 which is the root node it's gonna be left subtree height which is 1 minus right subtree height which is 2 because 1 and 2 so 1 minus 2 is going to equal minus 1 which is still in our acceptable range so no problem there since the deletion happened towards the left we don't have to deal with the right subtree this is obviously balanced so let's calculate balance factor for these three nodes just by looking at it of course 0 0 0 is what we are going to get as the balance factor for all the nodes and these are properly in our acceptable range hence we can see that this entire tree is still balanced so let's proceed and let's delete 33 okay so now we are talking about deleting 33 which is basically the root node so it has two children so this is the third case again we will go with option a select either a or b okay so if you are doing option b then so do option b for all the nodes when you are deleting node with two children if you are sticking with option a then use option a throughout the entire process okay do not switch between the two so we are going with option A throughout this entire deletion process. So option A says find the largest node in the left subtree. So for 33, we have to delete 33. We have to go to the left subtree and find out the largest node. Who's the largest node? It is 25. So we have to take 25 and put it at the place of 33. So let's do that. So erasing 33 and now we have to put 25 over here. Once you do that, then we can easily erase 25. So erasing 25 is use case 1 which is deleting the leaf node for leaf node you simply have to erase 25 there is no children over here so just delete this correct okay deletion done after deletion again we have to calculate the heights and calculate the balance factor so for 25 this is the left subtree height is 1 minus this is the right subtree height is still 2 so 1 minus 2 is going to give us minus 1 deletion happened over here so we don't have to deal with the right part for 15 the height of left subtree is one single node which is going to be 0 minus the right subtree has nothing so 0 minus minus 1 which is going to be 1 for 11 it is going to be 0 we don't have anything 
towards the both the sides so yes these are values which are there in our acceptable range and since they are in our acceptable range we can consider this tree also as balanced tree or balanced binary search tree also known as avl tree okay let's move forward let's delete 11 now 11 is over here it's a case 1 we can simply erase 11 but now there is going to have a imbalance over here correct so now if you calculate the balance factor for 25 the left subtree has only one node which means that the height is 0 minus this time the height of right subtree is still 2 because 1 and 2 is the longest path between 55 and 66 so 0 minus 2 is gonna give us minus 2 so here we can see that we've got our very first imbalance for 15 it's gonna be 0 for 55 and all these other values it's gonna be the same so for 55 it's gonna be minus 1 for 35 is 0 for 77 it's gonna be 1 and for 66 is gonna be 0 okay so now again we have two options this is where the problem has happened that is at the root level so that is our critical node so starting from that we can either consider this case as a right right imbalance case which looks like this or we can also consider this case as 25 55 35 which is a right and left imbalance case so this is nothing but right left imbalance you can see we go to the right first then we go to the left first and in that case we have to do a right left rotation so two rotations so let's consider this as a right right imbalance where we have to do a left rotation let's simplify it we can go with the both options but we will go with the easier one so we'll select the right right case and in that case we have to do a left rotation so when you do a left rotation and if you're considering these three nodes for the left rotation the center node comes at the top right we'll take it to the left side and 25 will come to the bottom so the similar case is happening over here this is a left left imbalance so you're taking n2 to the top and n1 as the left child of 20 you can see this is what is happening correct so let me just cut this entire tree and put it over here and let's try to reconstruct the entire tree so 55 when we take at the top it will become the new root node correct so 55 will come over here 25 will become the new left child of 55 so 35 will arrange later so let's write 25 and 77 will be the right child as it is of 55 so this is what will happen after the simple left rotation so what about the other values 15 35 and 66 so 15 is the left child of 25 so 15 will be as it is as the left child of 25 what about 35 the 35 was the left child of 55 but now 55 has a new left child of 25 so we'll compare 35 and 25 and since 35 is greater than 25 we will append or attach 35 as the right child of 25 and then we are left with 66 so 66 was towards the left of 77 do we have anything towards the left of 77 no so 66 will be as it is as the left of 77 so we'll keep it as it is okay and this basically will be our new balanced binary search tree or a avl tree okay so by doing a simple left rotation from this structure we got this structure which is balanced so let's erase this one we don't need this one anymore now we're going to deal with this avl tree so this is the avl tree you can do the calculation of balance factors again but it's going to come as balanced only the balance factor for the root node is going to be zero for this zero it's going to be one over here it's going to be zero zero and zero okay all right let's proceed forward let's delete 15 so 15 is case one which is a leaf node simply delete it but when you delete it you'll have to calculate the balance factor so balance factor for 55 is going to be left subtree minus right subtree which is weirdly still 1 minus 1 which is 0 this looks a little weird structure right so for 25 it's going to be minus 1 for 77 it's going to be 1 for 35 it's going to be 0 for 66 it's going to be 0 so, so still this is a avl tree it is still balanced let's delete 35 so again 35 is is a leaf node so simply erase it delete it are things still balanced yes they are for 55 the balance factor is going to be 0 minus 1 which is going to be minus 1 
for 25 it's gonna be 0 for 77 it's gonna be 1 for 66 it's gonna be 0 still balanced let's delete 66 erasing this leaf node still things are gonna be balanced deleting 77 still balanced deleting 55 so once you delete 55 the new root node is gonna be 25 okay so we are left out with one single node and of course it is balanced it is still a avl tree and this my friends was the entire delete operation delete sequence and the things that you have to perform when you delete a node from a avl tree so the key information to take from this entire video was the deletion process is exactly the same as a binary search tree deletion however after deleting every node we have to make the check of calculating the balance factors again to see whether the entire tree has become imbalanced or not and in case it is imbalanced, then we will have to select the appropriate rotation and apply that rotation onto the critical node which got imbalanced and then again get back the AVL tree which is the balanced binary search tree. Okay, so this was it. I just wanted to show you the entire process. Of course, as I mentioned, we will see the program. We will see the practical side of implementing the AVL tree which will have insertion, deletion and all the different rotations, etc, etc. But this was just the working and theoretical numerical which you can get in your exams. And I hope you've understood the deletion process. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap up this video over here. I hope you like this video. Please, please, please give this video a thumbs up if you've made it so far. Definitely let me know in the comments how this video was. And do share this video with your friends. That helps a lot. Your comments, your likes and your shares is the most important thing on this channel. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.